Three, two, one. Hey there, guys. I guess we're here. I think we're here. <laughs> so welcome to Fridays with SLC. Um, it's just me and Denny today hanging out with you. But we're going to be doing, I think, something pretty fun. Pretty fun. Pretty cool. So. Yeah. yeah. We're going gonna... to make a cross draw knife sheath for a, a folding knife yep and we're going to put a beaded inlay in it which obviously yeah. you don't have to do for yours but it's kind of a neat little thing yeah that's, um, to include so that's basically what we wanted to show you yeah is, is a beaded inlay so, so beaded but inlays. we had to do it on something you know of course well we've got a couple samples here so we've got a knife sheath that denny had made um last week with just a little one of these beaded rosettes um and these are things that we sell so obviously you could make your own so if you've got a loom and you want to do the beadwork for, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, you're welcome to bead it yourself. That adds a whole nother element that we will not be talking about today because <laughs> it's terrible. I did it one time and the beadwork, I think, took me longer than actually making the knife sheath. So, I mean, it was, it was fine. It was fun. You get to do some. Anyways, we won't talk about that. But so we do sell a lot of these beaded things. So depending on what you're doing and what you want to inlay your beads in, your beadwork in, we got a couple samples here. So this is um, like a wide ladies belt where he inlaid three beaded rosés, rosettes, rosés, yeah, rosettes, rosettes. What I would call them. And then some of the the strip sections here. So we've got a strip on either side that he's inlaid. Um, this belt just has some of those strips inlaid here, a um, couple all the way around. So those are pretty neat. And then he just did some finger carving around that, kind of like those look like ferns. Yeah, which I like them. When I was in New Mexico a couple of years ago, we went and saw the Acoma uh, Indian Pueblo, and they had a lot of pottery that had stuff a lot more ornate than that. Right. That's as close as I could come, but but uh, that's kind of what I was after when I did that. Yeah, and so in our catalog and on our website, we just have we have quite a few different um, different examples or different options when it comes to just these beaded, these pre-beaded panels. So you can either get a strip, which obviously this is a pretty long strip for either a shoulder strap or a belt. Um, we have also just some little short style strips that you can buy. So depending on the project that you're doing, you know, this would be a good bracelet one. Yeah, that, and that's the size I used on, so, on that belt, on both of those belts. On those belts, yeah. yeah. So just this little three inch this little three inch long one and then we also have the rosettes so we have them in several different sizes there's these beaded rosettes that are already kind of sewn down to a piece of leather mm -hmm. ready to go so yeah. there's a lot of options when it comes to that yeah. okay all right so let's well let's gonna get into this um we are gonna do a giveaway during the video so kind of hang out for that we've got the leather cuffs um everybody's kind of already entered we had that contest through facebook um, YouTube and Instagram to like tag a friend and um, enter to win one of these cups. So we'll do that here in a little bit. Yeah. We'll give those away. So, okay, Denny. Well, well I, what are we doing? You know, I don't, we already went through drawing a pattern. We did. A week or two ago. And so I drew a pattern for, for this particular knife sheath. Uh, so we've got this guy. That's a really cool knife. Yeah, so this is, is it Tony's? One of that Tony's? Belongs to Tony's, belonged to his grandfather. So. And I looked it up online. Great -grandpa. His great-grandfather. His great-grandfather. So and I looked it up online, and this is, I, I believe they called this Indian stag for the handle. It's oh. really gnarly. It's ugly, but it's beautiful, too. Yeah. You know? It's uh, well-worn. Yeah, and it's something that's uh, not available anymore, I don't believe. Yep. So we're going to be making a, a little holster style sheet for that. Yeah. Okay. But anyways, I've already got a pattern drawn out for it. Uh, this is the front and the back side of it. And uh, this is the liner. When <clears throat> We could make this sheath without lining it. We could make it just single ply. Sure. But since we're putting this beaded inlay on it, you we have to. to line it. Yeah. Because that's what the, the inlay uh, attaches to. So anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is take this. Uh, let me see here. Well, I'll make it a right side. And, and you've got to be careful to make it for the right side. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to draw around this pattern that I've got here. Denny, what, what thickness of Herman Oak do you have there? Uh, I'm gonna. This is four to five ounce. Okay. Uh, for the liner, I've got three to four ounce. Okay. So uh, that'd be about a seven or eight ounce uh, finished sure. product, finished uh, ply. Uh, you can go a little bit lighter than that if you want to, or you can go heavier. 
Uh, this one is on the verge of being as heavy as I would want to make it, and I think I used a little heavier leather on it. Though. Yeah, it looks like you've yeah. got maybe all the way up to maybe like 12 ounces yeah. on there, so yeah. it's a little, it's a little stout. And if you'll notice his his inlay section or his um, lining section, he's not going to line these two parts right here because those have to glue together anyways. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it here, but I've got the outline of my this stitch line that I've got here. I've got it drawn on the pattern. I've got it little, I punched little holes in it here. And when I put this liner on, it just, it just, covers over that just a little bit mm -hmm. you know because i didn't i didn't want three layers out here no and there's no and, and once you line it yeah then you have to rough it up and it adds a whole another right right so thing. Yeah. anyway okay so i've drawn this out I, I forgot to mark my little polka dots here i think they understand this I hope so. Yeah. I'm just making these dots because this is where I'm going to actually stitch the... This is a pancake style knife sheath, which means it's all one piece, but I've got to stitch it down around the outside of the knife itself. So anyway, I'm going to cut this out that I've got marked here. Cut here and leave this piece... Uh, or the, the back side. But there again, I'm using a round knife. You all can, you do it. You can use whatever cutting tool you, you're you used to or want to. We're all used to you cutting out everything with a round knife, Denny. That's what I do. <laughs> that's what he does. We're all very jealous and very impressed. Well, that's what I'm trying to do is impress you. <laughs> it just, I can make such smoother cuts you don't have to cut through multiple times i mean sometimes that's what i find when i'm just using my my old foot which i like and i love but you know you kind of go through it once and you you find yourself cutting through a couple times maybe right. not with this thin of material but if you're cutting out you know eight nine ten yeah. ounce leather okay i've got a big cutting board but i'm gonna i've got to punch these slots out and i want to oh, yeah. put it on top of the board here so i'm going to put this up here and I've got a, a two inch uh, bag punch here. Uh, you can just punch a hole on each end and, and cut between right. the lines if you want to. A two inch bag punch is maybe more than most people want to buy. I'll cut it with a glue pot. But anyway, I'm cutting these uh, belt slots out with this punch. Okay, I've got that cut. Now what I'm going to do is turn this over on the back side and I'll, I'll mark my uh, back piece. But this part here, I'm going to mark exactly because that's, that's got to match up. But the rest of it, I'm going to make a little bit big because when I stitch it together, I want a little bit extra on the outside. Larry, Larry Schmidt also has a, a knife similar to this one, an old India stag handle case wrapper. All right. So, But it's too expensive to carry around. As yeah, any yeah it's, big that's knife. a collector's item for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Mike asks, are you going to line both the front and the back? Yes, I am. Okay. I, I don't have to, but I'm just going to use the same leather front and back, so I am going to line both sides. Right, because just a single ply would be a little bit thin. On the back side, On the back yes. side, yeah. And plus it, you know, it's a, nice. a, a fully lined item like this looks pretty nice. It's got a real finished look to it. Yeah, yeah, especially, I mean, especially if you're making something for a knife like this, you know, go all out yeah. and, and line the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, a lot of you, if you're doing this at home and going to hand stitch everything, it might not be something that you want to do, but. I would. The if you're, you're going to hand stitch. The only extra stitching you're going to have is this backside, this, this, this one little, little section. This little top section so, back here. So, yeah, go yeah. all out, do the whole thing. All right, now I'm going to cut this liner out. 
And I'm just going to cut two of the same thing. Only I'm getting, I'm going to flop it so I got a left and a right. Notice how I flopped that. <laughs> Don't forget to flop. Or flip, I guess you'd call it. Which I don't know which sounded better to you. You can flip flop. <laughs> flip flop. <laughs> All right, there again, I'm going to cut this. So I don't have to mess with so much material at once. And after I cement this to both parts, I'm going to take the French edger and skive this outside edge down so it's not a big lump which I will show you here in a few minutes. Okay, so just to reiterate, Denny, it looks like we got a four to five ounce for the, the top and the bottom. Yes, four to five ounce top and bottom okay. and, and okay. two to three for, for the, the liner. Okay. okay, next step. I've already, I've, I don't want to make any marks on this, but I've already got this, this dotted line here where I'm actually going to stitch. So we're going to inlay this little set of beads here wherever I put them. Where did we put our little bead? We had it. Is it still in the bag? No. 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 Is it over there? No. no. There they are. There it is. Duh. <laughs> Under some leather. It's always the last place you look. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Now these are about an inch and a half. But I'm gonna, there's a nice little yellow bead right in the center of this. So I'm gonna set my dividers and I'm gonna I'm going to cut a hole in this, but I want to make it just a bit smaller, and I'm going to have one set of beads underneath this. So I'm going to eyeball. So just like we did last week with the with the cabochons, we want to come in a little bit on our inlay. Right. Because you don't want to see the edge of the bead pull away. So that's one thing with, with the beadwork that's a little bit tricky is you, you really need to get just an edge of that bead under the leather because otherwise you'll have this gap between your leather and the bead. Right, especially when it bends. If you'll notice this, this yeah. is bent and it'll it'll have a tendency to kind of crawl down a ways on, yeah. on that outside edge. So, But we're going to do one full row of beads underneath this. Okay. And I've made a little circle here. you all have a round end punch this big, that'd be great. <laughs> Who has one of these, though? <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes you can get pretty large round punches, but maybe what do they go up to, like a one inch, I think is the largest round punch that we sell. Yeah, I think we have some, some bigger, uh, like, arch punches. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but uh, that's as big as we've got here. Okay. All right, I've got my circle cut out. Now... I'm going to wet the back side of this a little bit because I'm going to skive this down with a French edge because I don't want this big thick edge. I better wet both sides. <laughs> While we're at it. Yeah. I'm going to anyway because I'm going to make those little swivel cuts in there. So, all right, let's cut okay, on so I don't mark it all up. Now I'm going to take the French edge here. And I'm going to cut probably about half or maybe a little more of this off. I'm just going to taper it. Just be careful and take your time when you're doing this. And I always tell you this, sharpen your French edge before you ever start. I stopped this good before I came in here this morning. So. Look at that. Yeah. That's pretty good. Now when we set this on here, that's going to fit just about right. Okay. And I forgot to bring a canvas, a piece of canvas in. Oh, uh, we always, that is the one oh, thing that we, we have, have in these little pockets. All right. Okay, I'm not going to do it right now, but. Okay. Now, I'm going to set this up so I can make these little cuts. Little fancy cuts around here. I'm going to make a border around the outside of this circle. And that's, 
that's also going to be my stitch line. Okay. And then, I guess I'm, all I brought was this pencil, so <laughs> this line, I forgot to bring a stylus in here. We'll forgive you this time. Okay. Ideally, he'd be doing this with a little metal tip stylus. Yeah, so I wouldn't leave a pencil mark, but this, I'm going to be stitching over directly over this line anyway. This is very precise, as you can tell. Yes. <laughs> very precise. I'm also going to make a stitch line up here. Okay, now that's where I'm going to start. And I'm... <clears throat> These little lines are all the same distance apart, so I'm going to go about like this. And I'm just going to start here and, and mark this all the way around. Okay, so what Denny's doing, he's going over his stitch line, and he's just marking um, the start of all of these fun little swivel cuts, right? Right. That you're going to bring in. So he's just going around with his, with his wing dividers there, and he's just giving himself the starting point of all of those little all those little lines you could also okay. use an overstitch wheel on this uh, oh sure you know, but most of them are, are pretty small compared to this but you could just like mark every other every other right because once again you're going to stitch on this line yeah so even if you had every other mark that you were using it'll, it'll go away when you sew it right And this will be very good swivel knife practice for you guys that to, to, to want to do it. Just making swirly lines? Yeah. I think, yeah. All right. Now then, I'm going to start wherever I put my swivel knife here. I dropped it also before I came in here. Now I'm going to start right here about in the middle. And I'm just going to make a curve like that. I don't know. If... Tony, do we have a closer? No. <laughs> Hang on just a second, Danny. I got a long way to go. <laughs> just keep going. All right. But I'm just going to make a curve here. And just make each one kind of go into the to the last one there on that middle line of my uh, where my beads are going to go. There we go. And this, I'm just kind of freehanding this, and that's what I would suggest all of you folks do too if you're going to try this, because if you try and and make a mark. Uh, you're kind of fighting a losing battle. Because each one changes. If you'll notice, I'm going to get up here in a little bit, and these lines are going to look really close together. They're going to start the same distance apart, but it's but there's kind of an optical illusion. Kind of a physical illusion, I guess. <laughs> because they will be real close together at the center. Denny, once you get to this corner, let's take a look and see what you've done. Okay. Yeah, this is about where it's going to start to do what I was talking about. Yeah, so we've got this. So we're just kind of swirling. Just swirling yeah, in. Just, yeah. Just swirling around. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh. Now... See right here, see how close together these look? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they'll widen back out when I get around this little spot that I'm in. See that? They're, I've started exactly the same distance apart, but they look real narrow there. And I don't know, I'm not a physicist, so I can't explain that. <laughs> But these are like a decorative cuts on a floral carving. You know, you, you start each one pretty heavy and you kind of lighten up at the end. But each one is on a curve. There are no straight lines on this deal that we're doing. There we 
we go. And this is not my pattern. I saw it somewhere else and I thought, man, that looks real southwestern. This looks real <laughs> Akama Indian look to me. There we have it. That's the oh, whole deal. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. What's next now? Are we going to bevel the lines or just leave them? No, we aren't going to bevel them. Not bevel it. Okay. We're just going to leave them. Uh, let's see here. I think maybe. Probably. Get this on here and mark our circle. Okay, I'm going to take an ink pen and mark this so I don't lose track of it. If I can find my ink pen, here it is. Okay. And if you'll, if you'll notice, I'm, I'm right up against these two slots. That's what I was after. And you're just going to catch those just right in your stitch line. Right. Yep. Now I'm going to mark this too. Then I'm going to mark the circle that we've got. Now I know where to put the little uh, rosette. And this is a thunderbird. This is a little bird's head up here at the top, so we want to make sure we put it right side up. That's right. So I'm going to now mark around this, see how close I can. Pretty close, I probably ought to but it down this way a little bit. We've got somebody that asks some about our Orion calf dye system um, to use. We, we've done a video on that. That's a pretty kind of in-depth question. Um, they're, they're not hard products to use. However, you, you kind of need to be a bit of an artist to know how to blend and mix and build colors. So with the Orion calf system, you've got three different products and they each kind of do a different thing um, and kind of showcase each color in a little bit of a different way um, and you can do a lot of blending it's basically kind of like like watercolor pastels kind of a situation um, with blending there's a lot of um, people on Instagram that post some pretty amazing projects where they've they've used the Orion calf dyes um, and it really Play with it first. Use some of your, your veg leather and kind of figure out what you're doing before you start using your, your shark Angela in this situation particularly. Um, it, it, really, it all comes down to kind of your expertise with putting colors together and really figuring out what each product um, does and to get the effect that you're looking for. So I, I would, you know, encourage you to check out Instagram. Just like search the hashtag Orion Dyes, um, I think is the hashtag that, that most people use whenever they're posting about it. They even have, uh, Orion Calf has an Instagram page yeah. as well. If you just type in Orion Calf, you'll yeah. find it. And they'll showcase a lot of things. It's really like, it's going to be trial and error for a while while you figure out what the products do to get the coloring that you're looking for. It's, it's, much, it's much more advanced than just dyeing a piece of leather one color. Um, which you can do with that, but it, it's really meant to do this kind of whole array of coloring on exotics and, and a lot of that two-tone situation. So I, I would encourage you to look it up. We do have a video where, where we've done some stuff on it. Um, but don't don't jump right onto your shark skin and then and then be sad. <laughs> be sad. <laughs> don't be sad. Be sad. If, if you don't quite get what you're looking for. So, it, you know, it works on any veg tan. Um, import veg tan is a little bit better than Hermit Oak for that particular product because you want as white of a background as possible so that the color stands out the most. Um, so if you've got like some import veg that's, that's really, really pale, that's going to be the best case scenario of, of, to practice with. So that's my suggestion for you, Angela. Cool. Okay. Okay. 
Now I've cemented, uh, spread cement on the back side of this liner and on the back side of our beads. Now I've got the back side of this, uh, of the whole sheath, and I've marked around the, the perimeter of the actual pattern, and I've marked our little stitch pattern so I can kind of see where it is. And this is the back side of the sheath? Yes, this is the back side. Okay, okay. Okay, now, I'm gonna put this liner piece here and make sure it matches up good. Mark it. So you're not putting the liner all the way to the bottom of the sheath? No, I'm just putting it to the bottom of this, this stitch, stitch line. line. Okay. Just make sure it, it covers that or gets to it, basically. Okay. Because it's not really going to go anywhere. No, it's, yeah. it's going nowhere. <laughs> Guarantee it. Yeah. If you barely catch it in the seam, that's okay. You've got some spots where it's sewn in and some parts that it's not, that's okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to spread cement on these two parts. By the time I get that done, probably the bead will be ready. Beads will be ready to stick on. Liz, you got some names over there? I do have some names. Why don't, while Denny's gluing, why don't we figure out who's going to get dibs on, on these pick. bracelets? So whoever I draw first will get first pick, and then the next person will get to pick from the remaining two, and then the third person will get the leftover one. So let's see here. Do you know how many entries we had, Abigail? 60. Just, yeah, just 60 over 60. entries. That's crazy. There's so many pieces of paper in here. Wow, guys. Okay. You can't so, look. Oh, I can't look. One. Just pick. Pick one. Okay, so we've got, this is number one. Who do we got here, Denny? Thanks a lot. <laughs> we have Kumarville S, YT subscriber. So that's a, that's a YouTube, so Kumarville, Kum something. Kumarville S. Sure. See, I think sure. pretty good. Or KU so Marvel. KU, maybe. I don't know, Marvel, Marvel, YouTube. Okay, who's next, Denny? So you get the first pick. Whoever you are. Our Marvel. <laughs> Come, yeah. Oh, I'm picking? Yeah. Who's next? We've got Julia's Creations on Instagram. Julia's yeah. Creations? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then last but not least, we have... Oh, let's wait. Okay. okay. You, can, you can just leave it. I'll just leave it. All right. Okay. We'll announce the last person in a moment. All right. Put that back right. In there. Okay. Okay. We need them to hang out for a little bit longer, don't we? Yeah. They're all going to chill. They're not here for the free stuff. Oh, okay. You can go ahead and next then. <laughs> okay. Now our cement is, is tacky enough where I can stick this on. Head up. Head up. Yep. Tail down. I tell a story about birds and heads up and tails down but I won't. <laughs> just just use your imagination, you guys. <laughs> I, think, I have been enjoying the birds this spring. We have some blue jays that just hang out in our front yard. There's a there's four of them that just kind of flitter around in my magnolia tree every day. Sometimes they try to fly into the house and hit our window. I feel bad for those guys, but it's been a uh, I feel like there's been a lot of bird activity here this yeah. spring. My wife and I, uh, we go walk out, out at Springfield Lake just about every night. Sometimes we don't go all the way out there, but uh, there's been a lot of buzzards out there. Mm -hmm. Most people think they're really weird birds, but they are so beautiful. I would love to be able to fly like them. Mm -hmm. It was real windy one night, and there were about a dozen of them. Oh, they were probably 500 feet in the air. And I never saw them flap their wings one time. Yeah. They were just soaring back and forth. Just having a big time. I do like to watch them. We drove up to Kansas City yesterday, and there was a hawk that, like, landed in the median of the road and then took back off again. I'm sure it got some sort of a little rodent down in there. But I always watch for hawks on that drive. Yeah. You get to see quite a few of them. Do you count them? I do. <laughs> Last week when we went, I think I saw five hawks hanging out. Okay. Yesterday I just saw two. Okay, 
Now this piece is dried enough where I can stick it. And did you oversize that top just a little bit? Yes, I did. Okay. And I'm about to show you why. So we didn't, when we cut the liner, we didn't cut everything else. We kind of cut to size because yeah. it was going inside. But this big piece, of, or the top piece I, I left out because I'm going to have to stitch this now because after I cement things together, I won't be able to get to it. That's right. And also, if you, if you cut your lining exact, half the time it's not gonna line up very nicely. That's right. And so you, you wanna trim it off after. Leave it a little bit oversized for your stitch seam and then trim it up after you get it glued down. Cause then you'll just have, you'll have a nice flush edge. Um, and you keep moving around over there. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm sorry, that's what I do. <laughs> I fidget. <laughs> Okay, now I mark this on the outside, which I shouldn't have. I should mark it on the inside because that's the stitch line that's gonna show is, is this line right here. Oh, I always sew mine from the backside. Well, I could and I did on this one, mm -hmm. but I was so wrong, you, you guys, I was so wrong. <laughs> so I'm gonna stitch this side. Okay. And, but I'm not gonna do it until after I stick this one together because I gotta stitch them both. I guess that if you do that, then all of your stitches will look the same. Yeah. So that is a thing, that's a thing. Yeah. Um, it, the liner weight was two to three ounce, guys. We're using four to five ounce for the front and the back, and then the liner is two to three. So, okay. Oh, we're doing the inlay. All right, now trying to line the little bird head and tail up. Gotta make sure it's just right. Yeah, because I want I want that outside row of beads to be all the way underneath this thing. And there we go. Good, bad, or otherwise, it's on there. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. All right. I'm just gonna kind of press this down with my fingers and my thumb. And this will kind of dome up over the outside of those, yep. those rivets. Or, I mean, those beads. Well, okay. And so, Denny, sometimes on, on this size of an inlay, you don't necessarily have to, to sew it down. But when you have larger inlays, or like this piece, because it was pre-made, was already attached to a piece of leather, so it was secured. But if you're, like, if you did your own inlay, and it wasn't secured on the back by a piece of leather, ideally, you would kind of sew some of these little sections down uh, to your liner or to a thin piece of leather. On this use. on this belt, uh, I, Let's go up I a little bit. yeah on this belt I actually did stitch this first in, just inside this first course of beads. Yeah, I actually stitched with sixty nine thread. Okay, and it wouldn't have mattered if I would have used white, black, brown, or green. It goes right You under wouldn't there. see it because it's hidden by the beads. Yeah, you have to be very careful and deliberate and turn each stitch over by hand because it'll break a bead if you yeah. stick. Yeah, you it with can sew them on a machine. Like yeah. you can sew the beads in, but like Denny said, you have to be real careful and kind of walk it through because you don't want that needle to come down on a bead because yeah. you'll just break them. Yeah. But but this one, I don't think you're going to physically sew any of the beads down. No. Is that correct? You're just going to sew around the yeah, perimeter? I am going to stitch around this okay. perimeter, but it won't touch any of the beads. Right. But like you said, it's this piece was backed with leather anyway. Yeah, so, so it, the contact cement is going to hold it in place. Right. This little cap that we have over the edge is going to secure the rest of it. That way it's not like you don't have to worry about something coming up and kind of tearing it off because it's, it's housed right. underneath. Right. Um, but you can very gently sew this inlay in if you wanted to. Yeah. So Now before I go to the machine, I want to use a French edger and just skive down the outside mm. edge of this to, to, so we don't have a lump there. You don't want any lumpy leather. Yeah. But I'm really not, I'm not making the piece smaller. I'm just, just uh, taking that to corner off. Yeah, you're making a nice little wedge so it'll just transition nicely. Right. There we go. All right, that one's ready and I'll do the same thing to this. Your holes aren't punched in that one. I know, I don't punch them till last. Okay. I didn't mention that and I'm sorry, thanks Tony. Will you say it one more time? Maybe they didn't hear what I asked. Uh, yeah, I, 
I punched the, the belt slots in this the top side of this, but I didn't punch it in the bottom side because when I cement it together, it would be really hard to hit both of those spots at the same time. So yeah. I'll, I'll punch it later. Yep, so once you got everything in there, then you'll punch all the way right. through. Right. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the machine and uh, I'm gonna stitch. Don't forget to back stitch. Okay, okay. Well, I won't have to on this. Oh no? Yeah, but when I start to stitch around here, I will back stitch. Mm, okay. But this, because I'm gonna go over this first stitch. Are you gonna grab them? Yeah. Okay. But I'm just gonna stitch from here around to here. And from here around to here. But so that's the part I won't. Go. Yes, that's the part I won't be able to get to. Yes. First, I'm gonna run this piece of scrap oil. Tony's adjusting the camera, so we're just gonna hang out right here for a second while Denny gets set up. I hope everybody has wonderful plans for this weekend. It's looking to be a pretty lovely weekend, at least here in the Ozarks. Are you getting sleepy over there, Liz? It's been a bit of an exciting morning. Conference table in. We got a new conference table in today, guys. It will seat so many of us. It's beautiful and chrome. And what happened over here, Denny? Uh-oh. Oh, oh you're got to make sure. Let's see if I can go up and show what happened here. So what happened there, Denny? I broke a thread. Well, why did you break, <laughs> why did you break that? I had, the thread was, was caught underneath the spool here. I tried to pull it on through. It didn't come. <laughs> Stitching her on. I don't have to completely rethread the machine. I've got to kind of rethread it. What did I do for myself? Everybody's watching. Make sure you can thread this needle. That's a lot of time. <laughs> I'm here for that. <laughs> Looky there. First time. <laughs> First time. <laughs> All right. Now let me try this one. Good show. And this is why you always test out your machine before you just start going. That is 100% right. Little too much tension. Looking good? Looking good. Awesome. All right. Now, this is real, you guys. <laughs> Here at that edge. Get right in that stitch. 138 thread on the top and the bobbin? Yes, on this. Yes. When I use 138 thread, I generally don't go smaller because the next size smaller that we have is 69. So I use 138 top and bottom. Especially on something like this where you're going to be seeing both sides. Yeah. And I was going <clears> to <throat> oil and antique this before I did this, but I didn't, so we aren't doing that now. I'm not going to oil an antique, or otherwise the thread will be antique. I, I wondered well, what we were doing. Would too. Yeah, the beads would be also <laughs> antique. But we still can oil. We'll let this patina naturally. Alright. Now, back to the table. And you can pull that one out. Okay. The 
this one. Then I get the scissors. Gotta snip it. And I know we have a thread burner here because Melissa's handy dandy drawer deal she did the other day. Oh, these are good snips. Yeah. Yeah. Stole them from Terry. <laughs> Terry, so Terry has good. the best snips. Okay, now I'm going to uh, bevel the edge of this little critter on both sides. Because that's also very hard to do once it's assembled. Yes. So. But I'm just beveling the part that I stitched. Razor blades of that piece of leather that you're using for scrap was way too nice of a piece to be using for scrap. <laughs> it's still for sale, Razor Blade. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Denny's special stitching on it. All right. Now, I didn't bring anything that spun or oh, anything. I got you a piece already. Oh, right. A nice piece. And I didn't bring any saddle soap. Oh my goodness. Don't you have a holster for that saddle soap? No, I don't. Oh, oh that'd be funny though. <laughs> Maybe we can make that. We can make that next week. A little make saddle it. soap holster? Yeah. You mean go get you some, Denny? Uh... Yeah, for the for the rest of it, and I can I can saddle soap it after. All right, don't use anything that needs camera changes. <laughs> <laughs> what will need camera changes when I move to a different spot? Move around. That's okay. Well, we can kind of get in there when we're done and do a little bit more burnishing. Yeah, it'll be okay. Yeah, we can put the saddle soap on, but. But to really get the nap to lay down, now's the time to do it. Yeah. And it's doing that. Don't you think that's nice and sleep? That's very nice. Yeah, don't forget your edge, edge burnishing materials. It's like I say, every every time I come in here, I, I make a list of all the things that I need to bring. I actually write them down and then check them off when I put them in my little in your red little riding hood basket. <laughs> but I always forget something. Oh, Tony's got no like got wrong saddles. Oh, oh no, he right. doesn't put the right. That's good. That's good. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's hey, not. we have paper towels these days because Denny got us some. Because Tony did what I do. <laughs> yep, I didn't hit any, I didn't break anything or make a, a total mess everywhere. At least it's water. Just water. And it didn't get on the veg at all. Okay. All well, right. You could use that. That's nice and wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can use that to, to burnish the other edges. All right. Now we're ready to put this bird together. Let me see how the stuff kind of lines up. Looks good to me. It looks great. All right. Let's do some cement. Oh, crap. How are we doing today, you guys? <laughs> Oops. Well, I guess I'll get another. If, if you let that to dry set up, roll it'll off. peel off. Okay. Yeah. Well, don't. Apparently, you can get the brush stuck in the lid, so don't do that. <laughs> apparently so. <laughs> Oops. All right. Now I'm not. I'm not putting cement on this whole thing. I'm just going around the outside of this uh, liner part. Yeah. You don't want to have to glue down where your knife goes. Yep. Yeah. If you get a little glue in there, it's not the end of the world, but don't, you can help it. How long should you snip the thread before you burn? Uh, I don't know, like an eighth of an inch? Yeah. Or Maybe a sixteenth? Yeah. The longer it is when you burn it, the the more visible that uh, that burn will be. But oh, yeah. I was going to say, Tony, if we go to a top one... Uh, so like this one was kind of like a long thread and so it made this little thread clumpy clump which is fine because it's on the inside but like you wouldn't want that on the outside so yeah. a thread what a clumpy clump <laughs> yeah no. what would kevin call that a clumpity clump yeah probably. that's a kevin word i've been here for a long time guys you, <laughs> you eventually just assimilate to the verbiage that your boss uses uh, okay, I'm gonna get the hair dryer out. Frodo, is this the belt you're talking about? This one, Denny. Denny makes everything, guys. So Denny made this. So this this big beautiful thing. I'm thinking that's the left, right? For you guys, that's the left. That's my right. Your left. Yeah. Thank you. 
All right, that's good enough. When you do this, if you don't spread a real thick coat on, it doesn't take much to tack it up like that. So just lining up that top section. Yep, line up the top section, and I cut it big enough where the bottom is going to cover no matter what. Yeah. It really is the pits to have to try to line up edges all the way around something. Yeah, it's like, all, for me, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Just oversize, oversize everything on, on your bottom, cut your top to shape, oversize the bottom, and then just trim it up. Because your edges, your edging, it gets way easier when you do that. You don't have to sand nearly as much to get everything to line up. It's just a lot. Just makes, makes your life easier. Yeah. So. Okay. Now I'm going to make myself a stitch line around the outside of this, uh, the front. You got a little glue on there. I meant to peel right off. And I'm going to do this outside perimeter first, and then I'll go back and stitch the pancake part of it. Pancakes sound good. Doesn't it? I knew there'd be a... <laughs> All right, I'm going to the machine, honey. <laughs> Liz was talking about back stitching. I'm going to start one stitch back from where I ended up on the top. That way I cover it. Right, here we go. Tony, have we had anybody pick their bracelets yet? Uh, not that I've seen. Can I give away the last one? Sure. So we've got lucky person number three is Jean Garney. Jean Garney gets bracelet number three. I assume that's from Facebook? Yes. Yeah. Anybody picked anything yet? Nobody sent any message, so if you're on Facebook or even if you're on YouTube, if you're the winner wherever, send us a direct message from whatever platform you choose. Yeah, whoever gets to us first, we can go. Oh. Abigail breaking a rule over there. <laughs> you can make it a race. I don't know if I love this thing. Quit trying to sell 46 and Lynn wants me to sell. No, we're <laughs> I know for a while we were putting together a lot of twenty sixes. We would put them together. We are we put them together as quickly as we get them. Yep. It's the getting them that has been difficult. Oh, oh, those are the. I don't think those are the good ones. Are they the good? There's ones? some other ones on the wall behind you too. All right, now I've got the. I don't know what you can oh, see here, but I got wrong wrong people. All right, so I thought you were back to the table. Got the outside perimeter stitched up. Now I'm going to stitch the inside perimeter. Because he's already got the lines on there from yeah. from earlier. My little polka dots. Okay, and I am going to back stitch two stitches. So I noticed when you were stitching stitching that last part, it was kind of leaving some feet mark on there. But you can rub those back out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. People worry about that. Worry about. That. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You got other things to worry about. Whoop. Like, um... Like falling off the edge. Like, where are you gonna go, where are you gonna go fishing on Sunday? I am going to, uh, actually... See, I knew there was a Sunday, story. But, uh, <laughs> Monday, I think I'm going to stop. Right. To, uh... Just north of Springfield. To, to Holston Mill. You have to talk about it when you get over there. You're running that machine. Oh, way away from the microphone. Oh, Denny. What? We messed up. What did we do? We forgot to sew the inlay in. Oh. Oh, you are. <laughs> but it's too late now. It's too late. So. To turn back now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we got so excited about those top edges, we forgot to do that circle. Where are you going there, Denny? <laughs> about this. So what I'm going to do is come over here. And stop <laughs> well, guys. Hey, it's supposed to be like this. 
<laughs> Don't ever tell anyone different. <laughs> you know, it's Friday. Uh oh. No, back sitch. Back sitch. Too late for that. Okay, too late for that, too. <laughs> we'll just we'll just keep oh, this first go. one over here. It's gonna be great. I tell you what, guys, you really gotta when it comes to, to making holsters and knife sheets, especially with inlays, you really gotta think through your every little process. Like I find I'll forget things. My maker's mark is the thing I forget the most until it's pretty much already put together and then I have to find a way to stamp the sheet. Right. <laughs> like that's probably my biggest my biggest thing that I forget. And when you're on live video, I know. it's really easy you're, to forget you're just stuff. Rushing. You're, you're trying to get stuff done in a time frame. <laughs> trying to make a whole which by golly, we're gonna be done here too. <laughs> Trying to make an inlay holster in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> while we entertain. Well, in any case, you guys know what we're doing. Yeah, this is gonna work. It. Well, we're gonna give this one away. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll just send you both of them. <laughs> Not with the knife. Not no. with the knife. No, this stays with Tony. No, it stays with Denny. Oh, it stays. Mm -hmm. yeah. Denny has it for a while. It's gonna. It's gonna. Be in Denny's care for a little yeah. while. What are we doing? Uh, what do you need? The Snips. Clippers? Snips? There you go. Thank you. No. I think this is what people get so excited about the live videos is when we mess up. <laughs> because they have these same things. Like, that we're happen. not alone. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> This one I left because I couldn't pull it through because I'd stitched through it from the back side. Right. So but we'll when you do that, you can just clip it off flush and no one will ever know. It, it won't come loose. Yeah. So there we've got about an eighth of an inch that we're uh, burning here. That he was just getting too excited about that fishing trip. I was already there <laughs> all right now I'm gonna trim around the outside cool every time I watch you do this I fear for your fingers <laughs> Well, like I say, the trick is to keep the, the knife into the table that you're cutting on because it can't get away from you that way. Gotcha. Okay. Anyway, that looked pretty good. Yeah. So let's Let see. Let me here. get that little piece of sandpaper. Okay. Since I don't have any glass, no one wants me to use glass either. Let's see. The, the first beveler that you use, the French beveler. What's that, that number? That French edger. French edger, that's number a, six. Yeah, it's about a quarter inch or a three eighths. Probably a quarter quarter inch. What are you going to use around the outside on it? I'll use the number two uh, Western Beveler. This Osborne one here? Yeah. Is that 133? Yeah. And then we have the other. You don't want to use our SLC Pro Bevelers? Uh. No, these work better for something like this. Just a little thicker. Yeah. Okay, well, let me punch our slots too while I'm at it. Now we're going back and punching the slots in both sides. Probably don't want to use the <laughs> not, blue not that. Right? Yeah. And I just want to point out, punching these slots is not, I mean, he's only punching through four to five ounce leather right now, but it still takes him. A couple good whacks. They so didn't even didn't even get it all the way through. Yeah. A heavy mallet and a granite slab. Yeah. People always say my my punch is dull, but your punch isn't dull. It just takes a lot of pressure to yeah to cut through it. But anyway, there we have that. Now let's. Uh, I'm going to use this number two Western Beveler. I believe it's a Western style. Let's see. Can you move over a little bit, Denny? There. We go. There you go. So then something like this, like you're getting a pretty decent rounded edge on it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And this type of edger lends itself to this because it's thick that you're a long way off the table and uh, it's, it's easier to, to bevel the edge than one of these. Sure. You definitely want to do this before you mold it because afterward it'd be a pain. Yeah. We're just about to where we can mold this. If I don't forget something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I just now. felt you come around that corner and I looked at that inlay and I was like, there's not a stitch there. It's just not there. <laughs> it's not there. You're right. It's not there. Okay, now I've got this. Uh, this is a, what they call a tight corner beveler. I know. We need to find some of those. Yeah. That thing That thing is neat. I post the link, but we don't have any. Uh, we do, yeah, we don't, we don't carry this beveler. Where is this one? We can get you one. Is that a Barry King? No, this is a, a Weaver. A Weaver? Okay. So you and could some, get one through Weaver if you, if yeah. you wanted to. And some people have, people have a Weaver account. Uh, some people well, I don't know don't. if you need to anymore. They're getting their, their oh, self. Really? Yep. They're, yeah. I mean, you probably still have to make an account. It's like you have to make an account on our website, but yeah. I don't, I think they'll sell retail now. I didn't so. realize that. Yeah, that's, I need to get one of those. I hate yeah. these edges. Oh, yeah. Or like in like doing like small inlays and things where you've got, you cut off some funky shape here or there mm -hmm. and you've got all these weird corners. Okay, now let's burnish a little bit. And then we'll be ready to mold this thing. You guys sure are talkative today. They're talking amongst themselves. You don't even need us anymore. You just come here to talk to each other. What are we even doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is like going to the bar, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't care what band's playing. You just, <laughs> just want to hear a little music. <laughs> uh, well, we're glad that you're having a good time. I think this is the only chance Denny and I get to see each other every yeah. week. So we meet up in this room, we do our thing, and then we go back to our corners. <laughs> <laughs> Other time it's, it's hey, I <laughs> Well, lately, you've been in the room twice a week, haven't you? I have week? Been, yeah. This, you guys I get stuck have, with me all the time these days. I am this week, twice. But Spencer did a really great job on his flip. And he uh, he made, did you see the hat band that he made? No, has he yes, made one ready made for next a, week? He, yeah, he uh, made a prototype. I'll have to Turned check that out. out. Good. Yeah, I hope you guys are excited about, about all this braiding that we're about to do. <laughs> okay. Now, if, I say if because I didn't do it. If I had already antiqued this and put a finish on mm -hmm. it, I couldn't wet the outside of it. Right. But I'm just going to take my squirt bottle. That's what I do. Just squeeze it open and spray in that hole. Yeah, just spray in that hole. <laughs> Dump, Dump out, out the excess. <laughs> <laughs> and where's our knife? It's right here. Let's see if this dude fits. Okay. This is wet molding 101, you guys. Also known as the back of Denny's head. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. It's great. Look at that. Do you want to read these again? Yeah. Okay. So, got it in there. It looks... I like it natural. Yeah, it does. Probably look bad. that back a little bit. Yeah, that's gonna patina real nice. Uh, Dan's curious how you sharpen that beveler. Uh, the tight corner beveler, uh, the same way as you would any beveler. I would use I use the corner of a, or the edge of a, a buffing wheel myself. Okay. But this this is what they call a push pull beveler. Mm -hmm. So it's sharp all the way around. So it's sharp all the way around. But I never use the pull side, so I don't worry about sharpening it. I don't gotcha. know about everybody else, but. Uh, so when I sharpen it, I just go sharpen the push side. Okay. 
on the buffing wheel. You can get yourself a piece of heavy cord and uh, mm -hmm. put Jules Rouge on it and strop it like that if you want to. Or maybe the edge of a thick piece of leather. A thick piece of leather. Bevel it first, put the Jules Rouge on it. The edge of a strop. Yep. And just pull it just like pull it. this. Only pull. Only pull. Only pull. Because you will bevel your strop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once. <laughs> Okay, so guys, real, real, real quick again on these bracelets that we're giving away, we've got um, the, the first one that you get first dibs is Kumaravel S on YouTube. So Kumaravel, Kumaravel, there's a lot of A's in there. So Kumaravel S, and then our second person was uh, Jewel, that's not Julia, Julia. it's Jewel Sia. Julia. Okay. Julia's Creations on Instagram. Julia's Creations on Instagram. And then we've got Jean Garney from Facebook. Um uh, gets the last one. So those are our those are our three winners of the cuffs. So let's see here. So we got it looks good. It needs a little bit of time to dry. It's a little bit wet. Yeah, and then I would put a good coat of oil on it. Mm hmm I could probably still antique it. I'm not going to, but if I was careful, I could antique that outside. I might do it later yeah. anyway. So this one's quite a bit lighter weight than this one. This yeah. thing is hefty. This yeah. thing is pretty hefty. But I think this will probably this will mold mold really well to whoever's wearing yeah, it. It'll be um, more comfortable to wear. Yeah, yeah. Heavy one. So you could even put a belt in it now and kind of mold these slots a little bit mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Um, Denny, why did you use a two inch slot instead of more like an inch and three because, quarter? Because it's going through at an angle. Okay. You're, it will actually be sitting about like this. Okay, we've got a belt. And an inch and a half, yeah, an inch and a half belt will be just about right through that. So with those angled slots, you really, you can't, you can't yeah. be exact. Tony, you want to go to the overhead? Yeah. So, so you got to have it a little bit wider because it sits through at an angle, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That's a pretty nice set together. Yeah. That's not too shabby, Denny. Awesome. Okay. Well, there's that. Anything else? Ooh. Oops. <laughs> It's been a day, guys. It has. We, we better end this video. Better, yeah. It's going to take a while to clean up after this. <laughs> what are we, what are we going to do next week? What do we say on Wednesday? So Spencer's going to be doing a flat braid hat band on Wednesday. So we'll we'll do um, something like uh, we'll we'll get that done. So that'll be Wednesday. And I'm going to do some. Turks head knots and some monkey fists and not probably on on Wednesday, Tony. Those will be a video all on their own. What's some other crazy pretty... knot names? You got some crazy knot names? A Chinese button knot. Oh, because I had to figure out. I had to read that book and figure out how to do a Chinese button knot for that little box, that little jewelry box that I made. Oh, oh. yeah. I'll you bring it in there? next week. Okay. Next well, bring, Ch Chad has another. He's gonna bring it around. Hang on. Oh yeah, that's the one that. Welcome that to the video, that. Chad. Yeah, oh, he <laughs> went around the outside. So this the so this guy. Yeah, no, that's Here's not it. mine. But yeah, that Chinese button knot. Well, who made this one? I don't know who did make this one. I think Matt made it. Oh, okay. So yeah, so that little fun knot thing on top, but yeah, so we'll be uh, doing some more flabrating uh, with Spencer, or just more braiding on um, Wednesday. If we do have time, he might show you that tool that he had um, on Wednesday where he can uh, like straighten out the lace and then also bevel the lace. We kind of might go over how to use that tool. Um, his is very homemade, so you're welcome to make your own. Anyways, so that'll be Wednesday. I don't think we've determined what we'll do on Friday yet. So What do you want to do on Friday, Denny. Whoops. I don't know. Clean up this mess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll think about that, and we'll yeah. let you know on Wednesday. Figure out how to stitch our inlays in. Yeah, figure out how to <laughs> Get that make my lift and check it twice. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. See you. Bye.